This is how we do it. This is how we do it. La 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 la. La 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 la. This is how. Welcome back. This is mathematical modeling and computational calculus, video number two. First, let's look at the assignment from the last lesson. We were given a velocity function, v of t equals minus 10t, and we want to compute two seconds of the trajectory of an apple as it falls from a tree of a height of 20 meters. We divide the time interval into four one-half second subintervals, and we get the time shown here in the diagram, t1 equals zero, t2 equals one half seconds, t3 equals one second, t4 equals one and a half seconds, and t5 equals two seconds. So notice that we have four subintervals, but we have five times we want to calculate the position for. What are the computations that we want the computer to perform? We want to initialize the position at time t1, that is p of zero, to be 20. And then we want to calculate p at times t2, t3, t4, and t5. P of t2, that is p of 0 0.5, is the position at the start of the second subinterval. And the position at the start of the second subinterval is calculated as the position at the start of the first subinterval, p of 0, plus the distance traveled in the first subinterval, which is v of 0 times dt. So that p of 0 0.5 equals p of 0 plus v of 0 times dt. p of t3, that is p at time t equals 1, is the position at the start of the third subinterval. And the position at the start of the third subinterval is calculated as the position at the start of the second subinterval, p of 0 0.5, plus the distance traveled in the second subinterval, which is v of 0 0.5 times dt, so that p of 1 equals p of 0 0.5 plus v of 0 0.5 times dt, and so on. The computational equations for these computations are t at the start of the i plus first subinterval equals t at the start of the ith subinterval plus dt. And the position at the start of the i plus first subinterval equals the position at the start of the ith subinterval plus the velocity at the start of the ith subinterval times dt. We can translate these computational equations directly to MATLAB, and we get these MATLAB statements. The MATLAB statements are for i equals 1 to n, t of i plus 1 equals t of i plus dt, and p of i plus 1 equals p of i plus velocity at time ti, which for the current application is minus 10 times t of i times dt. And note that the loop calculates values for p2, p3, dot, 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 up to p of n plus 1, which is what we want. If we have four subintervals, where n is the number of subintervals, we actually want values for p of 1, 2, 3, up to p of 5. So now let's implement these equations. First, we need to load octave and get it running. So let's address that problem first. Here we are at the octave download page. There's a link to this page in the description below. If you go down to this line here, an official Windows binary installer is available from, and here's the link, so we click on this link. And if you look in the left-hand corner, you should see the thing begin to download. So finally it appears. We click here, open when done. So it's going to open in one minute. So now the installer is opening. We run it. So we get this message, which says that Octave needs a Java 
component or something like that, which we ignore. So it says proceed with installation anyway. Yes, we'll proceed anyway. Welcome to the Octave Setup Wizard. Yes, yes, next. Register in files. I'm not going to do that. You can leave all these checked if if Octave is going to be your default uh, MATLAB program. Choose the uh, standard window. And now it installs the files. Okay, now we're ready to run, so we might as well run the program. We don't need to see the README. Finish. Now this should start Octave for us. There it is. And now we're at the Octave command window. We can zoom in on the command window, bring up the editor by typing edit. You'll see that the editor is docked to the command window, and we can undock it by clicking on the icon in the right hand corner and redock it. So we'd like to have the edit window undocked. You can move it around on the screen, but we'll keep it here to focus on it. And now we want to enter our first program. We'll start with a clear command, which is used to set all the variables to null. We're going to write our program that computes the trajectory of a falling apple. And we're going to start with four subintervals, each of length 0.5 seconds. So initialize n to 4 and dt to 0.5. This time, we're not going to initialize the arrays as we did in the first lesson. You don't need to. You can. It's optional. So we will, instead of initializing the entire array, we'll just initialize the first element of the position array to the initial position of the apple, which is 10, and the first element of the time array to the time at time 0, which is 0. And now we're ready to write the for loop. So we begin i equals and we're going to project the position over four subintervals, one to n. The time at the start of the i plus first interval equals the time at the start of the i subinterval plus dt. And the position at the start of the i plus first subinterval equals the position at the start of the i subinterval plus. The velocity at the start of the ith subinterval, which is minus 10 times ti, times the length of the subinterval, which is dt. That completes the for loop, so we can type our n command. And finally, we want to plot the results, so we write a plot command. The x-coordinates of the points we're plotting are the times, and the y-coordinates are the calculated positions. The plot command plots the points and then connects them with straight lines, so it gives us exactly the piecewise linear graph we're looking for. We use the x-label and y-label commands to label the axes on the graph. Now we're ready to run the program. But first, we need to save it on the disk. So now begins a lengthy procedure that I took to save the program on the disks, which we will skip and resume once I've found the directory where I want to store the program. We name the program Apple One and save it. And now we're ready to execute it. At the top of the screen, there is an icon that says Save, File, and Run. Well, we've already saved it, but that's all right. If you click on that icon, it will save and run the file. But we get an error message which says that the file, such and such, 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 is not on the load path for Octave 
and we have several choices. We can either cancel the run or we can add the directory that the file is in to the load path or we can relocate the file. Well, let's, let's add the directory to the load path. So then the program executes. And there's the graph window. But where's the graph? The first time Octave runs after the program is just started, it sometimes takes a while. So we'll cut to the chase. It took a minute and a half for the graph to appear, but it finally did. And so we can move the graph window around, and there's the graph we were looking for, the solution to the homework problem. We can run the program with some different parameters. We can change the time interval to 0.01 to get a more accurate result. That will require changing the number of subintervals to 200. And we can run the program again. Now the program runs quickly. And we see the result more or less immediately. There is a more accurate trajectory for a falling apple. We can also go back and do our first example. So we change the number of subintervals to 2 and the time interval to 5. And the altitude we should change to 500. And then we can get the first example we worked with the uh, trajectory consisting of two lines. And then we can do the example with five subintervals. So we change it into five, dt to two, and run it again. So now we've seen all our examples programmed. We're ready for something new. We promised we would get to Newton's formula for gravity in the first lesson, but we didn't get to it. We will get to it in the next lesson, and we'll add a model for atmospheric drag. The equation for the drag force is given in the assignment, so give some thought to the differential equation model for a falling apple that includes the forces of constant gravity and atmospheric drag. We'll consider the problem of a falling apple using Newton's gravity model and including the effects of atmospheric drag in the next lesson, and we'll write another MATLAB program. This is how we do it.